welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Algonquin stock so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Algonquin is a renewable energy and regulated utility company with assets in the US, Canada, Chile, and Bermuda. It actively invests in hydroelectric, wind, and solar power facilities, as well as utility businesses. The company is headquartered in Oakville, Ontario, Canada, and was founded in 1988. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 5.8 billion market cap. They're trading at 8.45 a share, and they have 686 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They did have a small positive in 2019, but it's only been negative after that. They seem to be investing a lot back into their business. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was positive each year, negative in 2022. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that does increase from 1.6 billion to 2.8 billion. They recently released their first quarter earnings. In the first quarter of 2023, they had revenue of 778 million. Last year was 733 million. Most of their revenue is in the US, 640 million, 53 million in Canada, and 85 million in the other regions. Their revenue increased about 8% in the U.S. from 2022 to 2023, but it declined in Canada a little bit, increased a bit in the other regions. 85% of their regulator revenue is in the U.S. Bermuda is 7%, Chile is 4%, and Canada 4%. 74% of their renewable generation is in the U.S., 15% international, and 11% in Canada. Now let's go back to the income statement. They do break down their revenue on the income statement. 315 million of regulated electricity, 271 million of regulated natural gas, 87 million of regulated water reclamation and distribution, 78 million in non-regulated energy. Regulated means everything is regulated by a governmental entity. Non-regulated means it's open to the free market. Their operating expenses are 220 million. Of the 315 million of regulated electricity, it cost them $126 million to purchase that energy. Then, of course, they resell the energy to the homeowner at a profit. They spent $137 million in purchasing natural gas, which is about half of their revenue in that category. Regulated water has the best margins and only cost them $4 million with $87 million of revenue. Non-regulated also has really good margins. It cost them $8 million with $80 million of revenue. Then you have admin expenses, payroll and things like that, 17 million. Depreciation, 121 million. Total expenses, 636 million, which means they have operating income of 142 million, up a little bit from last year of 137 million. They spent 82 million of interest on their debt, a lot higher than last year. They had a big gain on the sale of a subsidiary, $220 million gain. So their earnings in the first quarter are $250 million. The reason it's so high is from that gain. Last year, earnings are $53 million. Let's look at the capital structure. $5.2 billion of equity, $7.5 billion of debt. They have 41% equity, 59% debt. Their net debt is $7.5 billion, so they don't keep much cash on their balance sheet. I gave them a whack of 9.8%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 9.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $7.8 billion. We divide that by 686 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1137. They're trading at 845, so they're trading at a 26% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is at 929. They say the stock is 9% undervalued. 10 analysts priced this stock, and the average price target is 977. The low is 891, the high is 13. Another eight analysts priced this stock, and the average price target is 847, pretty much exactly where they're trading. This is where the stock has been trading since they IPO'd. From their 2010 IPO until 2021, the stock price pretty much only increased. There was, of course, a decrease during COVID, but it came right back up. Its all-time high was about $18, $19, but it really fell off a cliff since then. 
dropping down to about 650 at its low, but it has come up since the bottom, but still trading at a major discount relative to the beginning of 2021. As you can see, they did start paying a dividend at the end of 2013, and they haven't missed a beat every single quarter. They pay a quarterly dividend, and it was 13 cents. It's down to 11 cents. Since the stock price has come down so much in the past couple of years, that's the main reason they reduce their dividend. And it's still a really high yield over 5%. There are 21 companies in the same industry as Algonquin. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They spend a lot more than most in CapEx. Their debt to equity ratio is pretty close to the median. They pay one of the highest dividends on this list. Almost everybody has negative free cash flow in this industry, including them. They rank third in market cap of all the companies. They have a good price to book and price of sales, but we can't look at their PE or price to free cash flow. Their revenue is higher than the median and average, and their five-year annual revenue growth rate is between the median and average. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 26% discount. This company has been around 35 years. They seem to be having a hard time generating positive free cash flow the past few years, but their revenue is increasing. So if they keep increasing their revenue, we're likely to see pretty big things in the future. I rank their free cash flows 2 out of 10, their revenue 6 out of 10, and their ratio is 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to become a member, you click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.